In this video, I'm gonna unbox, set up, and demonstrate the usage of the ultralight 10 inch teleprompter made by Prompter People. Seen here in this picture from their website, you'll notice it says 10 inch. And my first impression was that that was for a 10 inch iPad, but I believe that it fits up to 12.9 inch iPads or tablets. The 10 inch is referring to the actual size of the teleprompter screen. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start unboxing and see what we have here. Now I got lucky, this was for a corporate client. They bought this uh, for internal use. Well, they bought it to own internally, uh, which I'm gonna do the setup. So they wanted to order the soft case. Now the prompter is $3.99, and if, if you get the soft case, I believe it's $4.78. You can get a hard shell case like a Pelican as well, um, but for these purposes, it's not gonna be on an airplane or anything, getting knocked around, so the soft case was the way to go. All right, ultra light. And I'm gonna show you at least on this, how to set it up on this tripod, and let's see how it runs. All right, got our files. Mini Bluetooth keyboard. Now I have used this before, this exact same model. Um, and I actually liked it a whole lot. So I'm familiar with it, but I'm not familiar with the keyboard. So that'll be new for me as well. So we have the screen, it's nice bubble wrapped and everything. This is the screen um, that you're gonna read from. That aside, I might keep that to, to wrap it. I would keep the bubble wrap for the screen and this, this internal foam. Um, basically everything that's on the inside of the bag, I would keep to rewrap it um, after you finish using it. Because it is a soft case, it could get knocked around. This is what holds the iPad or the uh, tablet. You can see that there? This has knobs on the back, which extend, you loosen them up, and then this extends out, bam. Strength extends so you can fit different size tablets and iPads on it. If you're not familiar with this model, the camera sits behind the prompter, so you look directly at the prompter and therefore look directly at the lens. So you're not looking off camera trying to read or above the camera trying to read like some top teleprompters do. Um, so this is the bracket and the mount. Uh, let's see. I'll get everything unboxed. And forgive me if this video is rough. I didn't plan on doing this and it's just a little something I figured for people shopping, looking for different models that are interested in this. Um, they'll be able to see exactly what this is. So as it states, this is pretty much for smaller DSLRs, uh, mirrorless, compact camcorders, um, not big shoulder mount cinema rigs or anything like that. But I've used this with the C100, the Canon C100, which is a cinema camera. It's a little bit bigger form. Um, and that's what I'm gonna set up today. So just to recap, before I get started, I've got in this box essentially four pieces. So I've got the screen, which has the, this is for the, for the lens, um, to hide the lens, um, keep light from coming in. Uh, we've got this bracket here, you see that, and the main bracket, okay? Uh, we'll, you'll see how this comes together. And then, it's got a nice felt cover to it, the adjustable thing I've already shown you, uh, where the actual tablet, or uh, iPad in this case, sits. So essentially four pieces, They've bought the Bluetooth keyboard as well. So I also have that I'll set aside with the iPad and you'll see that next. I'm not gonna do it in this video, but I'm gonna do another one that I'll probably link um, to show you how I set up the teleprompter app and how I use the teleprompter app. I think I'm gonna do that, I'm not sure. So, got a nice like terry cloth, microfiber, whatever that is, I think microfiber cloth, uh, rag, and the instruction manual from Prompter People. So 
the first thing I'm going to do is actually I've taken the uh, quick release plate um, and I'm going to attach it. They have like a, a mount, uh, an adapter plate for tripods right here. And I'm, with the one quarter thread, I'm going to go ahead and tighten my quick release plate. Obviously, you don't want to have the glass set up and the camera mounted when you attempt doing this. Just go ahead and tighten it down. And it's got room for two, uh, at least two quarter threads. Um, which, future reference, I may actually use a second one just for stability. Um, so now we slide the hood glass, which is this, the reflector screen, on there's two little wing nuts type things. Loosen those up. So you can see this nice and good. Got wing nuts right here. And then they match up to these slots. Oops. If I wasn't wearing a black shirt, you'd be able to see it better. But those slots right there slide into those wing nuts like this. And then tighten the wing nuts down. So we got something started. Mount this on here now. Now I'm gonna really put the squeeze on all the, all my knobs on this tripod, just in case when it's mounted, it doesn't, you know, fall forward. So, now this is what your camera mounts to. This bracket here, again, so you can see, kind of funny shaped bracket. So I guess because of the camera, it gives you one or two positions. Like with the smaller camera, you can mount it here and that way it'll still be in line with the glass or a larger camera down here. And I have a larger camera, so that's what we'll do. So it comes with one, what they call a thumb screw right there in the bottom. And I think I'm gonna mount my camera, if I remember correctly, in the front position. So I'm gonna move that thumb screw up to the front. They don't have one in each each slot. So now camera upside down. And I think it should be like this. Alright, screw that in there. So she's kind of parallel. Tighten that down. And with a penny or a small screwdriver, penny would probably work better a quarter for this slot. Tighten that up. Now We've got the camera mounted, you can tell. Again, I'm gonna yield this way. We've got the camera mounted to here. And I think, you know what? This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this off. I think you have to do it the other way around. It doesn't tell you. Here I am saying, I'm gonna follow the instructions. But the instructions isn't detailed in telling you the best order to take the steps. This has like a little washer and a nut. And I don't know how I'm gonna access that if I have the camera in place already. So I'm gonna mount this first. Maybe I missed that in the instructions, but I'm gonna mount this first. And as you can see, this, once we get in position, this has to be loose to slide the camera closer to that screen to adjust it. But to get it in place, I don't think you need those washers. I'll, I'll keep them. But I think that's just uh, for storage. So the so the uh, so the screw doesn't fall out. So now that I've got this on, I'm gonna tighten up a little bit just so it doesn't move. Now I can put my camera in place, and it's a little easier to find this one, a quarter inch thread on my camera, than it would have been. I don't know. It just seemed like that. I guess that wouldn't have been difficult. Yeah. Tighten that up, good to go. Now we can loosen this, we've got the camera set up, as you see. Now, you're gonna slide this forward into this uh, lens cover, this hood or lens cover. Man, pretty simple. Loosen that up, this bolt underneath here, slide this forward and then wrap it around your lens. Now, if you're gonna be manually focusing, you wanna make sure you still have access to that. Uh, but otherwise, it's pretty simple. I'm spinning it around so you can see. On this side, there's like a drawstring. So you can tighten it up. 
Fits nice and snug, just like that. And once you spin it around, bam, you've got the lens right behind here. The only thing we need to do now is put the, the uh, tablet tray in place. Loosen thumb screws underneath here. I don't know if you can see these, but these screws, like I said before, adjust this. These need to be loosened. Now I'm just guessing because this doesn't show me how to do it, but I took these thumb screws off the bottom completely off. I dropped the bolt down through it and then I put them back on to tighten it, which is the only logical way I can see this mounting on. If it doesn't work, we'll figure something else out. So that gives us a little bit to slide it closer. I'm gonna kind of pick a middle spot and see how that works. Okay, so this part's fairly simple. I've already got the uh, sample text that I wanna use. So let me go back, I'll show you. I, I have the teleprompter app. So teleprompter and tap the plus to create a new script. Okay, you can import a document or compose, like type it up yourself. Um, so it already has an example but what I'll do, now I had some problems cooking and holding it, but type a couple letters and hold, click and hold your finger and hit paste. And now everything that I had already copied, uh, I emailed this to myself, sample text. It's all in the file now. So we've got their sample text that it comes with just to test it out and then I've shown you how to add your own. So let's close this and uh, save. So we go open that up and now bam, you've got your text. So down here, you've got your scroll speeds. Let's, let's do fast, so you can see fast. So see how fast that's moving? No one can read that fast, so we'll pull it back. We can do this live. Let's see. Uh, Start from the top. And what I would do is in my text, I would actually space that down to be about the middle. Because you don't want the person trying to read the top line. You want them reading right in the middle. So start the, the first sentence off indented down, you know, like three or four lines extra as space. So here's to the crazy ones. So here's to the crazy ones, the rebels, the troublemakers, the ones who see things differently. While some may see them as crazy ones, we see genius because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. So that was pretty slow. I was reading fast, but it's still scrolling slow. Um, so just adjust this. You're gonna find that whoever's speaking, um, they're gonna want it set, you know, according to how fast they read and speak. So uh, another thing you can do, let's stop and change the brightness. Fonts, you can make the font bigger or smaller just by going to the settings wheel. You can change the, the uh, text, but I don't know, I kinda like that, it's easier to read. Again, this is gonna depend on the actual person reading um, for, for most cases. Okay, so I had to take a minute to consult uh, with the, the client whose iPad this is, and we've gone ahead and updated to the pro version of the teleprompter app. So I'm going to, I'm going to select mirror mode and that's going to, you see it just flipped it upside down. So let's try it out. All right. So we have, we have our teleprompter set up. We'll go ahead and uh, make sure it's on mirror. So it flips. We're going to lay it in the tray. Again, we got these uh, like wing nuts on the bottom. All right, so other than the fact we're a little, a little lopsided, or a little crooked, I'm not sure what's causing that. All right, so you go ahead and lay your iPad in the tray. And we've got it on speed 14. We've got the font size set. We have it flipped to mirror the screen and we can hit 
Oops, scroll to the top and hit start. And if you need to, of course you can adjust it different ways, but if you need to, you can change the speed to faster or to slow it down. Pretty simple. All right, the rest is just fine tuning from there. So one thing I do want to point out here is in a few other shots, um, this seemed to be um, a little crooked. And what I found out was while you're positioning the iPad and you normally want to kind of stand in front of it and look directly into the picture, pivot the iPad so it looks right and then bring in these red rubber corners and make sure you do so so that it stays uh, so it stays level in the picture and doesn't look, you know, cockeyed. Um, so just something to do, you know, something to keep in mind. You don't just throw it in place and, and tighten up the, the screws, um, but do it, do it gently, find the right position and then tighten up the bottom. Um, so that way it doesn't look, look crooked. There we go, looks nice. So finally what I'm gonna do, just in case you're curious, is I'm gonna show you what the footage looks like filming from this camera uh, through it and uh, me reading off of it So as you can see I'm probably five six feet away. They say you can go about up to ten uh, But I think this is a, a good setup and this is what the camera angle looks like with me reading Right from the teleprompter. So don't worry about composition or anything but Just the setup and just the fact that you're seeing me you're not seeing words. You're not seeing the iPad screen um, This may be a common concern, but uh, for all intents and purposes as you can see, this works pretty good. All right, so there you have it. This is the ultralight 10 inch teleprompter by Prompter People. Um, I hope this was informative. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to you. And as usual, all the products used here will be linked down below in the description if you need it.